Hi everyone, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, I would like to welcome you to our OKR workshop for today. On behalf of the entire Valiantis team, we are so glad that you've been able to join us this afternoon. I would like to quickly introduce today's event and our speakers so that we can get straight into the content. So my name is Brianna Hopper and I will be our MC for today. I'll be making sure that we stay on schedule and help get your questions answered throughout today's session. Um, so with that, today you'll be hearing from Sam Ayers and Don Jacobsmeyer, two of our dedicated consultants at Valientes, both with a solid background in Atlassian tools. They bring a wealth of knowledge and have proven track records of helping our clients achieve their goals. If you are new to Valientis, we are a Platinum Atlassian partner and hold, among many others, Atlassian's Agile at Scale specialization. But really, if it's Atlassian related, we do it. This includes training, business process consulting, and custom development when the solution that you need doesn't exist yet. So with that, if you're wondering why you received John Doerr's book, Measure What Matters, let me introduce you to today's content, Objectives and Key Results, or OKRs. So today's event is supposed to be super interactive, so please share any questions you have in that Q&A chat, and then we'll save some time at the end of today to answer as many of those as we can live. Of course, if we aren't able to get to your question at the end, I'm going to drop Sam and Don's emails in the chat. So please feel free to reach out for some one-on-one -on -one help to get those questions answered. You may have also noticed when you joined that today's event is being recorded. So if you need to jump early, you'll be able to watch at the end. Um, we're gonna go ahead and upload this to our YouTube channel and I'll drop that in the chat for you. When you subscribe, you'll be notified of that new content and you'll also receive an email at the end with this video um, linked in there. So today our intention is to provide useful information on OKRs with some practical strategies on how you can manage them within your Atlassian suite. So without further ado, I am pleased to introduce Sam and Don. Hey everybody, I'm Sam and this is Don. We're happy to be with you guys here today. And I'm also delighted to share that throughout this event, we will be giving out JIRA bootcamp tickets. And so you may be asking yourself, what is JIRA bootcamp? And that's a great question. This is a three-day hands-on course that sets the foundation for practically everything else in Atlassian tools. It's for power users and admins alike. And like other Valiantist courses, we take a no slides approach. So expect to be in the tool about 80% of the time. Um, so can't recommend this course enough. I've been through it myself. It's a great, great resource available to you. Additionally, we have an amazing event coming up. And while it's free, attendance is limited and you'll see why. Valiantis Jira Line Success Stories Over Wine includes hearing, form, or hearing from enterprises who have implemented Jira Line and a wine tasting combined. So this event is remote and we are going to overnight you, yes, you heard me right, a full flight of wine and snacks to pair with that wine. So we're excited to kick off registration for this May 23rd with two guaranteed spots from this audience. So without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Don, who's gonna give us a introduction to OKRs in general. Take it away, Don. Thanks, Sam. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, depending on your time zone, it could be morning or afternoon, but we're going to dive into objectives and key results, or OKRs, the framework that has really revolutionized how companies from Silicon Valley startups to global enterprises achieve their goals. Uh, this was inspired by and made famous by John Doerr's book, Measure What Matters, and we'll explore how OKRs can align and motivate your organization. So at the core, um, objectives are what we aspire to achieve. They are broad, qualitative goals designed to propel the organization forward. Key results, on the other hand, are measurable, quantifiable outcomes that track the progress towards these objectives. So together, they form a clear, actionable framework that bridges the gap between ambition and reality. This probably sounds 
something like a KPI. And this is common. Uh, if this sounds familiar, you're not alone. We hear them used interchangeably at times, but it's important to know that they are different uh, and they're both valuable. So OKRs and KPIs are both valuable tools in setting and tracking goals, but they serve different purposes and operate in distinct ways. Understanding them, uh, understanding the differences is really gonna help you leverage both uh, effectively in different scenarios. So the OKRs are goal oriented. Um, they, they help you focus on setting and achieving future objectives while OKRs measure current performance or you know, slightly delayed performance against an existing benchmark. So again, OKRs are, are future, for, future focused, KPIs are present focused. OKRs also encourage, encourage setting a stretch goal that aim for some kind of significant impact where KPIs typically are tracking performance based on expected outcomes. Uh, OKRs also offer the flexibility to adapt and change quarterly, typically, uh, where you can reflect on shifts in strategy or priorities. KPIs tend to be uh, a stable measurement, on the other hand, of performance over time, where you're really emphasizing consistency or even subtle incremental improvement. And so ultimately, OKRs promote organizational alignment and transparency, fostering a sense of shared purpose across departments, business units, and even individual teams. KPIs, while they're certainly critical for operational success, they are very focused on specific areas or departments. Uh, so by understanding and using these different distinct strengths, Organizations can effectively set ambitious goals, measure performance, and continuously drive improvement across all levels of the organization. So why are these important? Uh, in a world where the only constant <laughs> is change, <laughs> um, OKRs are really meant to stand as a beacon of focus and alignment. They ensure that every team member, every department understands their role in the company's success. And this fosters transparency and collaboration. And so therefore OKRs are not just goals. They're a whole communication tool that aligns and motivates teams towards common objectives. And this ensures that everyone is rowing in the same direction across this you know, wide sphere, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about setting objectives and some key principles. Setting powerful objectives is really an art. Uh, they should be significant. They should be concrete, action-oriented, even inspirational, and really aligned across the organization. So a well-crafted objective challenges the team it sparks engagement, and it sets the stage for impactful achievements. And remember, objectives are the vision. They answer the what and the why. Now let's talk about some key results. Key results turn objectives from a wish into a plan. So they should be specific. They should be time bound. They should be aggressive, albeit realistic, uh, and measurable and verifiable. And so the best key results leave no room for doubt or interpretation on whether they've been achieved. They quantify success, they measure progress, and they keep the team focused on these outcomes that really matter. So let's take a look at a poor OKR. This, this OKR of make our bank more popular, get more likes on social media, increase the number of accounts, and make customers happy. Sounds okay, um, although we're left 
sort of scratching our head a little bit. Hmm. So the objective itself, make our bank more popular, is really too broad and it lacks specificity. It doesn't convey a clear direction or end goal. You know, we, we don't know if we've crossed the finish line or not. Um, the key results are also not quantifiable or measurable. They lack the specific targets and timelines, making it difficult to track progress or really determine the success. Get more likes on social media doesn't <clears throat> specify how many likes or by when. Uh, increase the number of accounts doesn't mention the type of accounts or the desired growth percentage, for example. And then make customers happier is generally good, but it's, subject, it's subjective and it lacks a, a measurement for determining how much happier are they now compared to where they used to be. So ultimately this lacks alignment. The key results don't clearly reflect or align to the objective uh, in that they directly contribute and how they directly contribute to making the bank more popular. They're really more tactical than strategic. So let's look at an improved version of this example. So now our objective is increase the bank's brand awareness and customer base in quarter one of 2024. Very different. Our key results are grow <clears throat> social media engagement by 30% through targeted campaigns by the end of quarter one, 24. Increase new checking and savings accounts by 20% compared to Q4 of the previous year. And then improve customer satisfaction score by 15% as measured by a standardized customer satisfaction survey by the end of the first quarter. So huge, huge improvement, mm -hmm. right? We revised the objective and it is now clear. It is time bound. Mm -hmm. It provides specific direction around this brand awareness and customer base. Um, the, each of the key results have a measurable target now and a timeline. So you can track progress and evaluate the success along the way, not just at the end even. Uh, it specifies the type of engagement and a target percentage increase. It clearly defines the product, in this case, a checking and savings account, and the growth target of, that, of those products. Uh, this uses a standard customer satisfaction survey to improve to measure improvement, which makes it more actionable and measurable. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then ultimately, it creates alignment <clears throat> and focus. So these key results are directly uh, directly aligned with the objective, which increases uh, towards increasing the brand awareness and growing the customer base. Uh, ultimately, this. This improved set of OKRs uh, demonstrates how specificity, measurability, and alignment with the strategic goal can turn a poor OKR into a really powerful one for driving success and direction and efforts in the financial sector, for example. So we've talked about uh, a, a poor example and a much better example. Let's talk about how we implement OKRs now. So implementing OKRs really does take more than just an understanding. It, it demands action. So we found success in starting small with a pilot program, for example, if you've, if you've never had OKRs in your organization. Now it is important to ensure you have top-down support while fostering this bottom-up engagement. Um, we also recommend using cycles for continuous improvement, meaning do a couple cycles of OKRs through a year instead of just <clears throat> one great big grand annual OKR. Um, this allows you to set an OKR, evaluate the results, learn from the experience, and then reset and do it again in a true sort of agile spirit. Um, 
this will really allow your organization to embrace transparency and allow everyone to see both the forest and the trees, which is, is really so, so valuable nowadays. Um, and then ultimately, it also allows you to celebrate the success that you've created and the progress, not just at the completion. So the way we recommend to roll this out is to educate your teams. Start with some workshops or meetings to explain the OKR framework, emphasizing its new role in aligning the organization and motivating teams and departments towards a common goal or set of goals. And then define the company OKRs. Collaborate with your senior leadership and set three to five strategic objectives for the company. And then attach, you know, three to five measurable key results to each objective. Ultimately, you'll then want to cascade these OKRs down. So departments and teams should develop their own OKRs that align to the company-wide objectives and support the key results um, that the leadership has created. And this will ensure that everyone is working towards the same goals, even within the context of where they operate in the company. Uh, encouraging individual support, individual you know, engagement for every employee to even set their own personal OKRs. That how does how does that contribute to their team's objectives? This will foster accountability for themselves uh, and engagement at you know, every level of the organization. We also recommend doing regular check-ins. Um, this could take a number of forms, but ultimately you know, some frequent review session to monitor progress, celebrate achievements, and address any challenges that arise. And then obviously adjust the OKRs as necessary as you do these reflections. Um, and then last, you wanna learn and adjust, right? So after each cycle, conduct a retrospective, you know, gather some insights and feedback on the process and then adapt to look at the next cycle. So now that our foundation is set, how about we do our first prize? Brianna? Thanks, Don, that was great. All right, everyone, like Don said, we do have our first prize winner of our next JIRA boot camp. So our winner is Ankur Agarwal. So you will be receiving an email from me with some additional information on how to redeem your prize. And if anyone else is interested in more details on this event, I'm gonna throw my email in the chat. So please feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to send over that additional information. So. Now that we've given away our first prize, why don't we take some time to actually dive into some tool integration? Um, so I'm gonna throw this back to Sam and he's gonna get us started on that portion. Awesome, thanks Brianna. Thank you, Don, for the introduction. That was awesome. I feel like I learn something every time we, we do this. So it's really, really cool. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and exit our presentation momentarily. And I'm gonna jump over to Jira and so speaking of tracking OKRs and Atlassian products, there are several options. And today I'm gonna to take you through a few of them. And within the ecosystem, I wanna demonstrate how we can create and track an OKRs within a Jira software project, within Confluence, within Atlas, which if you're not familiar, is a relatively new Atlassian product that's um, pretty neat and I'm excited to show you. And then also Jira Line. So um, as I'm presenting, you can kind of look at the tools or parade of tools as a, as a crescendo from kind of a low barrier of entry into tracking OKRs via JIRA software all the way to JIRA line, which is a very complex tool in its own right. So I'm going to kick off demonstrations with how one can use a JIRA software project. Um, and then I'm going to jump immediately into uh, Confluence as well. Um, to show you guys how you can create and, uh, and track OKRs. So just as a brief introduction to Jira software, if you happen to be on the call and you're, you're new to the Atlassian suite of tools in general, 
Jira software is a tracking tool or an issue tracking tool that's typically used by software developers, or at least that's how it started in its origins. And the native functionality includes projects, what ref uh, Atlassian refers to as issue types, there's fields, screens, and workflows. And all of these pieces allow us to create and track OKRs actually quite easily without changing too much out of the box with some of the project templates that are available to us. So when, in, when Jira software is used in conjunction with Confluence, which if you're not familiar with Confluence, it's Jira's documentation team collaboration tool, you may find that ancillary tools and add-ons aren't needed. And I hope to prove that in the next few minutes here. So I'm going to start from scratch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a project uh, that's brand new. And then I'll also show you kind of a fully fledged out um, Jira software project where we're, we're tracking OKRs actively. So with that, let's just start from the very beginning. So I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to use the software development project template, and I'm going to go Kanban here. And then uh, I'm going to click Use this template. And then here within Valiantis, we love company managed projects because we're all Jira admins. I'm not hating on team managed projects, but this is what we're going to use today, uh, company managed. And then we'll just say brand new OKR tracking project. And we're going to hit next. Love that project key. <laughs> yeah, mile long project key. And then we'll go ahead and we'll say this is OKR tracking and this will play. Yeah, there we go. We'll just give it a really ecstatic, annoying title as well. Oh, this is existing space. We'll just click continue. We'll create a page within the project later on. Okay. So what I'm about to show you, um, and this might make some devs cringe, so just bear with me here, but for this demo, we're gonna use epics as objectives and tasks as key results. So again, just trying to show you low barrier to entry, how you could start if you have Jira software, how you could start creating OKRs and tracking um, them today. So we also have the option, just as a side note, as Jira admins to rename the epic issue type as objectives if we want to, Probably not the case when you're within your organization that you want to rename the epic issue type um, to objective, but you could, hypothetically speaking. But if that's the case, no worries. We can still stick to using just the epic issue type um, for our objectives. Real quick, though, as my uh, partner in crime, Brian Dar, in our enablement uh, discipline likes to say, I'm going to put on my Jira admin hat for a moment and add the due date field to the screens. And why that's significant, it coincides with Don, what Don was showing us is that we wanna set target due dates for our goals and objectives so we have something that we can shoot for and reach. So with that, I'm gonna jump into project settings, still kind of wearing my project admin hat right now. And I'm gonna go into uh, screen specifically. If, if I can get it to populate. There we go. That's what we want. I'm going to go to screens. And then I'm just assessing what screens are being used right now by the Epic issue type. And it looks like I've got one default Kanban screen. If you're familiar with Jira Cloud products, you know that you get well accustomed with opening multiple tabs, just as a side note. So you'll see me doing that from time to time. Um, and actually, I want to... You know, actually, I want to use target due date. I don't want to actually use hard and fast due date. Let's go ahead and use target. Okay, perfect. Okay, now that our screens are squared away, I'm going to close that tab. Let's go back to the project. And let's go ahead and create an objective. So again, I'm using the create button at the top. And I'm going to use the epic issue type here. And I'll explain why in a moment. So we'll select epic. We can go ahead and keep it in backlog for now. Or actually, you know, let's do selected for development just for grants. And let's say our objective is become the number one. And you get to watch me fumble through typing this uh, banking app for developing countries. 
And then from here, um, we could put in a description if we wanted to. I think that would make sense to do so, but, but just for the sake of the demonstration, I'll leave that out. I'll go ahead and assign it to me. And I just realized I added the wrong field on the screen, so apologies there. I can remedy that in a moment. Okay, and then under the epic here, what we could do is let's, let's, let's create a couple of key results, or at least one, just to show you what this would look like on the board. So let's go into task, and we'll also throw this into selected for development. And let's say our key result is improve weekly signups by 15%. Again, we want something measurable with a defined due date. Perfect. And then from here, we can select the parent that we just created. And immediately, within minutes, we have this parent-to-child relationship of a key result to a uh, parent objective. Now, something here you could do to make this a little less confusing, and something I'll show in another app that I'm about to show you in a little while, is you could throw in objective as an O in brackets or something along those lines to denote, obviously, within this project, you would know that you're tracking OKRs specifically and that might be understood, but just to, to make it or further demystify what you're really creating here, you could throw that in the description just to make it even more abundantly clear. And something else interesting or something else that I want to show you actually. So this is good. Like we've got an objective, we've got a key result on the board. What we typically like to do, though, is have some statuses and columns on our board that might be a little bit more germane to tracking objectives and key results. So with that, I want to show you how to configure this board that I think will be a little bit more meaningful than our kind of default development statuses and columns here and ultimately really help us in our, our tracking and making sure that we're configured here. So I'm going to go to configure board. And I'm going to go to columns here. And so what we can do, let's go ahead and throw our backlog in the Kanban backlog. And let's add some additional columns. So let's say we want pending. And I'm going to throw that on the front here. I'm going to get rid of backlog column there. And let's throw in on track. I like that verbiage for OKR specifically. As a status, we'll add that column as well. We'll bring that guy over and kind of reorder it. And let's throw in at risk. We definitely want to call out if we're at risk on either our objectives or key results. Let's add that guy. And let's say off track. So maybe another one that we want to add. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and remove done just to kind of clean up this view and also in progress. Delete, delete, and we'll get rid of selected for development as well. Perfect. So let's add off track. Add that column. Paused. I think that makes a lot of sense. So let's go with paused. And let's go with canceled. And then last but not least, I think it makes sense to have a complete status as well. So on track at risk canceled and complete. And we'll go ahead and throw a done status associated with that one as well. Perfect. And then we're going to reorder these and then set a real as a resolution I complete. Perfect. And then one other thing that you might want to do is set your swim lanes based on Epic. That way you can kind of see the objective at the very top of the board. And we'll go back to the board here and show you what that looks like. And we'll throw our issue that we just created 
in a status that actually applies here. So let's say optimistically we're on track with both of these guys here. And let's go back to our board. Perfect. So now you can see in the span of a few minutes here, I have a meaningful roll up of a key result to an objective on a board that makes sense, at least from my opinion, on statuses that you would want represented for tracking OKRs. And ultimately you could create multiple OKRs, which I'll show you in this project. So this is how it would look if you had multiple key results rolling up to an OKR and also you're organizing by swim lane via the Epic issue type. And so very nice organized view. You can interact with the board just like you would with any Jira software project where you can update the status of these key results and epics as needed by dragging them across the board. You can open them immediately within the UI, provide updates as you're having team meetings, add meaningful descriptions, and then um, ultimately create subtasks that roll up under as needed. Um, so a lot you can do just with Jira software specifically, an extra layer even just within Jira software that you can leverage specifically with the Epic issue type is the timeline. And so within the timeline view, this is a really, really nice, if, you don't, if you're not in the premium tier of advanced roadmaps, uh, or I'm sorry, the premium tier of Atlassian products and you don't have advanced roadmaps at your disposal, What's really, really nice is you have the timeline feature on a project by project basis where you can use this as a planning tool or a high level planning tool as you're looking at OKRs um, across your organization. Very easy to use. Um, you can create additional epics or in this case, additional objectives here down at the bottom just by clicking add uh, epic here. We'll see if I can type with everybody watching. There we go. And you can click enter or hit enter and you've immediately created an additional objective. You can open that objective right here with, within the UI and update it as needed with more detail. And then additionally, you can create children or child issues under these epics. So this is where I can click the plus button here and say key result number one or whatever summary that I like. And then immediately you have the option to um, view this key result, um, update it in the workflow as needed. Additionally, within this view, you have the option to um, set some due dates on these issues by immediately just clicking within the UI. By default, if I set a date on a key result, it's immediately going to roll up and set that objective um, due date. So just again, want to highlight within a Jira software project, there is a fair amount that you can do today in a matter of minutes, just setting up a project that will ultimately allow you to track OKRs um, within your organization. And let me click in just real quick. So sometimes, just this quick side note, um, sometimes you need tasks in order to hit those key results. And so you do have the option, even within this UI, to open a key result, for example, key result two here. You can create subtasks that ultimately support the key result being accomplished. So Sam, go do this thing to support key result two. And immediately you can assign these tasks out to individuals. So again, just showing you an extra layer of hierarchy that you can leverage to really start hitting these key results or at least accomplishing the key results and ultimately hitting your objectives and goals there. So with that, one other thing, and then we'll, we'll move off of Jira software. So let's say you don't wanna use the Epic issue type um, to track these. You can use the parent field and hierarchical relationship between issue types to create a custom um, issue type of objective and then a custom issue type of key result. And very similarly to the uh, epic to task relationship you saw on the previous board, you can have the same relationship with custom issue types of key result and objectives as to not confuse things between um, epics if you have heavy dev use within your instances. So just wanted to show you effectively the same build, same board, same statuses that you could leverage quite easily and rather quickly um, after engaging your Jira admin to get some uh, additional issue types created. All right, let's go ahead and I'm gonna take a drink of water here. Pardon me. <coughs> Thank you.
let's go ahead and jump over to Confluence. So if I click project page, so sorry. <coughs> Tis the wonderful allergy season yep. uh, here in the Midwest. So if any of you from the Midwest, you can, um, you can. Uh, Appreciate the pollen starting yeah. to fall and get everywhere. <laughs> that wonderful yellow film over everything outside. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and um, take a look at OKRs and Confluence. So within the project, I can connect a Confluence space here, and then I can immediately create a blank page. I can create a, leverage a few very popular templates. But in this case, I want to show you the OKR template in Confluence. So I'm going to click More Templates. And then in this case, I've used it recently, so it's going to pop up somewhat close to the top of the page here, but you can see there's a whole slew of templates available to you. Uh, and if this is overwhelming, you can just search for OKR in the search bar and then click use here. And this is the OKR template within Confluence. So what's kind of neat about this template is you could track OKRs at this alone if you wanted to, but you can also use it in conjunction with Jira software and I will show you that momentarily. So with that, let's go ahead and create a template here from scratch. So we could say Valley Entis OKRs. And this is where you can at mention team members. And so from here, I'm going to at mention a whole team. If I wanted to at mention just individuals, I could also do that. So I've got a whole team of SAMs here that I can <laughs> that I can add. Um, and then also here, you typically want to put a timeline. Um, you know, I think that makes a lot of sense. So in this case, let's do today's date all the way to, let's say next year, same date. And then you can also add um, additional or links to other pages or links to other OKR uh, pages within your Confluence space. So just to highlight that, I've got a link here at the ready. And we can say, copy that. And if I copy a link to a, an existing Confluence page, it doesn't have to be another OKR page, but any kind of pages that are related to tracking OKRs within your Confluence instance, you have this nice UI setting where you can adjust how the thumbnail looks. It can be a URL. It can be an inline like what you see here. It could also be a card um, or um, you can actually have it be a full almost view of that page or at least truncated kind of view of that page. So kind of neat. But in this case, a little bit cleaner look. If I just kind of want a simpler link for folks to interact with, I'm going to go with inline. And then something that I like to show, often we have a scoring rubric tied to OKRs, depending on how you're, you're scoring them or if you're scoring them or not, or if you're just kind of looking at them as being off track, on track, at risk, et cetera. But what I'd like to show is you could add a scoring rubric here. <coughs> so sorry. Clean out that air filter. Yeah, I was gonna say, you got any jokes down while I take a, <laughs> a drink of water here? All right, sorry guys. All right, so let's go ahead and I've got kind of a pre-made rubric that I wanna copy in here myself. <coughs> Okay, so again, um, we've got our rubric, and then I want to show an example. We're going to use the same example, actually, that I that I had created previously. Um, so our objective is going to be become the number one free mobile banking app. You've got some helpful text here that you can um, just kind of reference in general, but let's say I'm the owner of this OKR, or this objective, rather. And then I want to set an end of quarter objective score. So let's say, um, yeah, let's say optimistically, we're gonna hit one on this one. And so this is using a macro here, a status macro here to kind of highlight that. And then for each OKR, I'm sorry, for each key result, we can put in improve weekly signups. 
by by July, 15%. And let me go ahead and get rid of that one. And let's tag one of the other Sams here as the owner for this particular key result. And let's say we're partnering with a team, why not? But you could also call out an individual here. And then again, you've got an expected um, end of quarter key results score there. And then what's really, really nice is if you're using this for standups or you've got quarterly meetings where you're going over goals, you have this wonderful update section where you can add um, updates as it makes sense month by month or quarter by quarter, or just depending on how you're looking at these OKRs. And then within the UI, um, hopefully to just to demystify this, you could throw additional um, KRs on each line. So each kind of subset of objective, um, let me scroll back over here. So each um, objective has a, a separate line for additional key results. You could add additional lines here for each key result that you want to add. I'm going to spare you guys this time. Okay, thanks for your patience, guys. Okay, so uh, with that, so you can add mention the owner, and then let's go ahead and publish the page here. So this is what the page would look like. Published, we have a key result, we have an objective. Again, this would be more uh, filled out depending on you've got multiple objectives and key results here. And something that you can do, and just hearkening back to the fact that you can use Jira software in conjunction with Confluence rather easily, is you can link your OKRs to existing JIRA issues. So back in my other project, if I wanted to link these objectives to objectives that I'm tracking within a JIRA software project, um, you can highlight, let's say this is the objective that I wanna tie back to an issue. You can highlight the text and then select link. And what's nice is you can actually search for the JIRA issue here. So let's say objective six was the one that's ultimately You've tied back to this. Oh, one. that's right, right there. Perfect. Good eye. You can tie it back there. And then ultimately it's going to kind of show like a hyperlink within um, the issue here. So you can also right click on this guy. And again, show it as an inline. Um, you can also, um, like I guess inline is ultimately what you're limited to here. This is grayed out. Um, but you could actually show it in this manner as well. So you have the issue ID and the summary and also the status of the objective, which is really neat. And then last but not least, if I click update here, you can actually create issues within Confluence within a Jira software project, which is kind of neat. So let's say I didn't have a key result for this guy here. I can highlight the text, click create issue, search for my project, and then put in a description as needed, and then click Create. And then what I'll have is a link to that issue. The issue gets created immediately. And so again, if you're having some kind of stand-up meeting where you're going over goals for your organization, you can use this template in a quite powerful way in the sense of being able to create issues within the UI that exist in Jira software projects where you can interact with them in a more meaningful way. All right, let's go ahead and pivot over to Atlas. And I will take a drink before I do that. All right, so if you're not familiar with Atlas, Atlas is a tool that allows you to connect teams across your company to organizational wide goals. It helps teams stay in sync as a result because it connects them to their apps and work wherever it happens. So Atlas's ultimate goal is to help teams understand what they're working on, why they're working on it, how it's going and what success looks like. <clears throat> it also helps stakeholders be in the know on a high level for how a project is going without getting bogged down with the nitty gritty details 
of JIRA project level tasks. I was just telling Don how dry it is in this room. I'm gonna blame the room, sorry guys. <laughs> so while Atlas supports several different, different goal frameworks, in my opinion, it really shines as a vehicle to track OKRs and I hope to show you guys that today. So I wanna, I wanna break something out here, or at least bring clarity to something very early on. So in Atlas, there are projects or this idea of projects but they're, they're not the same thing as JIRA projects. So while JIRA projects are where teams track their work, Atlas projects represent what Atlassian refers to as a stream of work being completed with a designated owner and a targeted completion date, which sounds very similar to what we were talking about with OKRs. So Atlassian suggests that an Atlas project is more than two people working on something for more than two weeks. So just wanna highlight that this tool is not an OKR specific tool, but it can be used for OKRs. It's very broad in its use. So that being stated, let's go into the project section just briefly with an Atlas. So where we're gonna spend most of our time is under the goal section here, um, but Atlas projects can have goals associated with them. But we can also create goals autonomously from Atlas projects. So I have this going green project here that has its own project history. And then you can see on the right that you can have goals that are contributed by on the right. <clears throat> and so again, just to highlight, I view this tool as very, very open and it allows really everyone to create OKRs or just goals in general at any level. So we can create high level organization of organizational objectives or kind of lower level team level objectives to anchor our work to. And so we do this in Atlas by creating goals as our objectives and sub goals as our key results, going back to this idea of how do we use this tool for OKRs? So let's take a look at some goals here. So let me show you a goal that's already created. So let's look at create the lowest carbon footprint in our industry. So within any goal, you have this about section where you can define what that goal is really trying to accomplish. You have updates, so not totally dissimilar to JIRA issue history. You can post updates and see who has updated these historically. You can tie these back to Atlas projects. You can tie goals to JIRA issues. So you can see I have a contributing JIRA issue here, this epic, um, well, actually it's an objective, but you can see how you can tie these back to JIRA issues as needed. You have a section for adding learning. We won't go really into this module today, but just to draw your attention to it, you can capture known risks and then also any decisions on a goal. And then over here on the right, the sub goal section is where these are our key results, or this is how we're using Atlas right now. And so you have what Atlas refers to as a sub goal under your objective. And you may noticed, you may have noticed that I adopted the same thing that I showed you in Jira software, where I'm putting an O in brackets to designate that it's an objective. And then also KR in brackets over here on the right to designate that it's a key result. Again, just further um, categorizing under this blanket categorization of goal to make it a little bit easier to ingest. And then looking at a goal specifically, not totally dissimilar to a JIRA status, you can update whether the goal is on track, at risk, off track, et cetera. So let's say it's off track. I'm immediately prompted with, I need to explain why this is off track. And then I have the option to add some attachments or files, emojis, probably sad emojis in this case, uh, additional links, and then any more detail that I wanna add to this particular issue. So if I click the details pane, you've got some more, um, you can add some more granular detail here versus the high level of why we are not on track. And then ultimately you can set a date. And so this is also something that you can 
set on an OKR on creation that I'll show you in a moment. Um, but here you can set a target date of day, month, or quarter. So again, really lending itself to the OKR kind of framework of doing things. All right, let's, let's create a new goal just to see what that looks like within the UI here. So I'll click Create, and I'm going to select Goal. And again, we'll use, and I'll spare you guys my typing, I'll just copy this in. Become the number one free mobile banking app for developing countries. We'll pick a start date of quarter, and we'll say October, December of next year. And then we'll click Create. And then we've got our goal. And what we can do is add our description, just like what I was showing you there. And then what we can do right here within the UI, so let's go ahead and give our goal a status. It's in pending, let's put it on track. Again, I have the same prompt here to add an update. We'll keep our initial dates so if this is a new goal. You can see that the status updates to a happy green color. And then we can add sub goals as key results. So right here within the UI, I can say, I'm gonna copy this in as well. Improve weekly signups by July. If I hit enter, or actually no, I can just click create new goal. This is where I need to pick a date for that. So we'll say uh, January of 2025 for this key result. And same thing, let's add one more. Let's say, this is our next key result. Establish at least one ATM access point across all countries by September. So we'll go ahead and select September of 2025, why not? And again, further, just wanted to show that, so now you've got your key results. And then one thing I forgot that you might wanna do as you're using this is just again, throwing in an O to designate that it's an objective and then going over to these key results, which are goals in their own right that you can interact with in a more granular fashion. And I'll put in key result there. And then what's really nice, this is something I neglected to share. When you're in a key result, or at least what we're calling a key result, you have on the right, the reference of a parent goal. So you can leverage the parent-child relationship between the goals to know ultimately what your key results are rolling up to objective-wise at any point. So really helpful within the UI there. And I'll go ahead and finish this out here. We'll just go ahead and throw in key result. Perfect. Cool. And then within the key results, you can again interact with these on an individual basis, tie them to Atlas projects, tie them to existing JIRA issues, and the list goes on from there. And so if you have a link to an existing JIRA issue, you can throw the link in there, click add, and then immediately it'll add that JIRA issue there. And interestingly enough too, you can actually move these issues through the workflow within the Atlas UI. And something that I think is really neat is if I jump over to this particular JIRA issue, you'll see that actually, once it loads here, under this link goal section, just thinking about it, you can see that under the kind of issue linking relationship, you also have the link to goals relationship. So again, further aligning your organization to ultimately organizational wide goals for work that's happening even at the Epic level. So kind of neat. Very powerful. Yeah, absolutely. One extra layer that I want to show you is on the standard and premium subscriptions of JIRA, you have the ability to turn on the goal scoring feature. So this is where we really close the loop on um, OKRs and using them within Atlas. So goal scoring allows the goal owner to score a goal based on their current projection. So as a side note, within Atlas, goal owners receive a monthly automated message as a reminder to share an update with stakeholders or folks that are following the goal. So let me show you to flip this on if you're an Atlas user here. So we'll go into the settings up here on the right and then workspace settings. And then down here on the right, pretty simple menu down here, you've got goal scoring method of simple status or status and score. 
So I'll click save and then show you what that looks like within the UI. So we'll go back to our goals. We'll go back to the OKR we just created. And then we have a, an extra layer of scoring capability up here that's not just status, but then also a score that we can assign. And so again, just a little bit more granular in how we can use this. And so we can say at risk with a score of 0 0.5. It's kind of neat. All right. Um, with that, um, let's go into, oh yeah, the only other thing I wanted to show you. So just to give people context for how you're scoring, within your goals, you could throw those in this about section. So you could throw the rubric in here just as a side note so people have a reference point, but just a quick side note there. All right. Last but not least, just powering through here, let's take a look at Jira Align, and I'm going to take a drink of water to spare you guys further coughing. All right. So if you're not familiar with Jira Align, I just want to provide a brief overview of what it is. So Jira and Jira Align have similar names, but they are truly two different tools that do integrate and in sync with one another. Um, but they have two different URLs, two different interfaces. And while they have similar purposes, there are some differences between them. So Jira Software has some great modules that help both Kanban and Scrum Agile teams plan, execute, and report on their work. So organizations moving up in layers of scale above the feature level like in the program, solution, portfolio, and enterprise layers may find that they need the ability to conduct long-term planning across the enterprise. This is where Jira Line comes in as a tool to handle strategic planning and scaled development. Jira is really, or just to put it more simply, Jira is at the team level, and we really start using Jira Line at the program level. So Jira Line in summation is a massive tool that we won't cover in its entirety during this demonstration. But if you'd like to know more about it, we have a Jira Line introduction webinar that I wholeheartedly encourage you to attend. And we can share a link to the next one coming up in the chat um, if need be. So what I do want to cover, though, within this, this tool is where and how OKRs are used. So to that end, we see OKRs being used across the layers of scale that I referenced previously. So within the tool, you may have executives more interested in a high level view of OKRs and their statuses across the organization. So this is where the strategy room view at the enterprise layer may be the most helpful to them. So let's jump into that now. I'm gonna jump into Geekbooks 2023 snapshot here. Okay, so this is our strategy room. So OKRs can be associated with strategies, goals, and themes, for example, but all goal layers can be treated as OKRs when key results are attached. So portfolio and pro program objectives with key results are rolled up by PI in the strategy room. So the average score that you see here in the OKR heat map is displayed to give an overall sense of health throughout the organization with regard to how the organization is performing against hitting those, those particular target objectives. So let me go into um, the strategy pyramid here and we're gonna go into portfolio objectives. And let's look at the first objective here. And we're just going to kind of go through um, everything here, kind of field by field and describe kind of what's going on. So very briefly, similar or not totally dissimilar to a JIRA issue, we have our summary here um, up at the top for this particular objective. We have a description. And then we have um, our key results that ultimately roll up to this objective. And so let me expand one of these down here. So we have a summary for the key result. We have our score, our current count, our goal count, and then the baseline count that can be designated 
our key result owner, and then a target completion date that we still have yet to set on this guy. And then ultimately the key result type. And not to be overlooked, there's actually this really neat report functionality that you can navigate immediately to within the UI to see how you're performing. And then you can also check in on these individual key results. And so this is where I can update the date, add an additional note, not totally dissimilar to what we saw in Atlas, but then provide an update here as needed. You can see some past updates that Vicky was updating the value here. And so you would have a nice running history of updates on a, on a key result by key result basis. And quick note too, key results are measurable targets. You know, Don was talking about that earlier that define the success of an objective or goal. And they can be measured in one of the following. So typically we see count, dollars, percentage, net promoter score or NPS, or a score, a criteria score ranging typically from zero to one, which is what we've seen um, against all these or within all these tools today. And then down here at the bottom, similar to what we saw in Atlas, you can actually tie these key results or these objectives rather back to um, epics or features under this aligned work item section. And then also call out any dependencies and um, ultimately back at the top, you have the status that you can interact with, um, that you can update as needed. And then also the objective score here as well, where you can update it as well. So let's go back to the heat map now that we have a little bit more context looking at our, uh, our example objective. So hopefully the heat map makes a little bit more sense, but let's, let's talk about it a little bit further here. So each row contains blocks that reflect statistics for objectives at the strategic goal or objective level. So strategic goals display as a single block because they aren't associated with PIs juxtaposed to the objectives, which are sorted by PIs in separate columns. So just to highlight that there, these are the columns and then each block displays the average percentage of progress made on the key results at the strategic goal or objective level that you see here on the right. And then for the PI specific objective blocks, progress is only calculated for key results of the objectives at the specified level um, that are associated with the PI. The OKR tree um, may also be a helpful view in this case because, let me scroll down so you can see it, it shows how all of our objectives and goals roll up to a defined strategy here at the top of the pyramid. So what's convenient about the strategy room, just to kind of tie it up as a whole, one can click on the links available in either the pyramid, the heat map, or the OKR tree down here at the bottom to either interact with a filtered list or a specific OKR in the case of the links available within the OKR tree. So let's move into a more detailed layer that'll ultimately get us to the point where we will demonstrate creating an OKR in Jira line. And I'd like to discuss OKRs at the program level. So with that, let's go ahead and navigate to a specific program. So I'm gonna to go to program here at the top within the new UI, and I'm gonna search for website services. And then, okay, good, I'm on PI.1. And let's go ahead and take a look at the program board. So this is the program room, kind of a neat view. We're not gonna go into that today. Awesome. So within the program board, we can see the team and program objectives tied to their respective PIs. If I run my mouse over them, you might actually see that it yeah, materialize at the bottom. I can see which sprints are associated with that objective that I have selected. And then the color of the objective um, reflects the potential for planning errors. So you can see all of mine are in red. So I've got some issues to address here. Um, I can also click into the objectives and see some more specific information about potential planning issues over here on the right, a description, and then what type of, object, of objective it is. Ultimately, this is the program objective here. 
and then what dependencies exist or maybe don't exist in this case, and then also any risks that are called out. Let's go ahead and jump over to the objective tree here briefly. And this is where we can view OKRs in, um, in more detail. This is the OKR hub here. So let's go ahead and um, so just discuss kind of what's here on the screen. So within the UI, the OKR hub presents similarly to a board within a Jira software project. So this might not look totally foreign to you or hopefully doesn't. You've got the goal or objective tier that you can manipulate within this menu. You've ultimately got the program that you can select here and all the available programs that you want to visualize. You can look at specific program increments. You can search for objectives. You can also sort these by status. So let's say I only want to look at something that's on track. You can do so by selecting that status. You can look at specific owners. And then similar to only my issues, filter on a Jira project board, you could look at only your objectives. So let's take a look at this second OKR here. And this UI should look relatively familiar or totally familiar to you. This is the same UI that we showed you um, back in the strategy room. You have all the same um, layouts, feel, or at least options available to you um, that we showed you in the previous screen. So there's some continuity here from a UI perspective that's really, really helpful. So without further ado, let's go ahead and create an OKR and see what that looks like within Jira line. So I can interact with the create button up here at the top. And then I wanna select objective down here. And then it walks you through a really helpful wizard that makes sure that you have um, all the meaningful information that you would typically need in an OKR. So let's go ahead and select program as our tier. Let's stick with website services and let's click create an OKR. Reminds me of the CSV import UI oh, up here at the yeah. top. It looks yeah. very similar. And then let's go ahead and let's say reach, I'll copy this in, reach meaningful scale by achieving 5,000 software subscriptions per month. And then we can copy that into our description just for all intents and purposes here. This is where you could put in a more meaningful description. And then we want to schedule this objective. So let's say we want to do it in this program increment or this PI. We want to add an objective reporter. That's myself. And then any contributors. So we'll add Adam. We can add as many contributors as we want. Um, and then we'll even add Bonnie here. And then we can add, um, if we wanted to, what objective this one aligns with specifically, but well, we can leave that here for, at the moment. And then let's go ahead and add um, some key results. So let's say very simply that a key result of ours is we want our net promoter score to be above 90. And we want to use the net promoter score type here, click add. And this is where we could set a baseline NPS score of 90, our goal of hundred. And then we could say, let's, let's target completion here in the next several months, end of July. We've got a key result owner and then key result type of net promoter score. That looks good. And let's click align work items. And then we'll go ahead and publish this one. Awesome. And so immediately it takes us back where we were in the OKR hub, where we can update the key results here. So let me go to the ellipses here. And let's go ahead and, oh, you know what? Actually, let's update the key result. That's what I want to do. Let's go to this ellipses and click check in. And let's update our net promoter score. So let's say 90, not 983. You're doing amazing things. <laughs> We're doing so well. <laughs> you broke the scale. <laughs> and we can click update. And what's really neat is I've got this update here. My score has been updated. I've got a percentage against what I've achieved. And then back in the UI, I've seen my objective score automatically update based on what I set within my key result. It's pretty neat. All right, 
Let's go back to our presentation here.